Let's talk about what's blocking your intuition. When you identify that roadblock and you move the roadblock, it opens up your intuitive channel beautifully. This is your moment. For a long time, there's been the discussion, kind of a general discussion of intuition being something special, being something unique. These special people have it. These unique individuals, these chosen ones have the gift. And I got to I got to tell you, I just want to smash that up into a bunch of pieces because it's so not true. We all come down here with super strong intuition. And there's some reasons why you might not be able to access your intuition at the level that you want to. You can, let's just get that right out of the gate. You know, you can, you can absolutely access your intuition to get accurate information, accurate answers, uh, clear communication. But why is it hard? Why is it difficult? The number one reason it's difficult for you to access your intuition and get accurate answers is clutter. Clutter, clutter, clutter. This is how I explain it to my students. And I love this analogy because it's really fitting. If every piece of clutter in your home, in your office, every item that you own that you have to care for or that needs repair or needs something done to it or with it, every mental piece of clutter, every relationship that needs healing, everything that needs to be said, every worry that you have, every, I got to get this done, I got to get that done, every single one of these pieces of clutter. All right. If every single one of those pieces of clutter was a hamster on a hamster wheel and all of those hamsters on hamster wheels are in your mind, you're asking your intuition to flow through that. So just sit for a minute. Right. How many undone to do broken needing attention things are up there <laughs> floating around, cluttering up the mind? There's a reason why people thrive with meditation. There's a reason why people thrive with anything, you know, that involves meditation, whether it's walking, uh, running, um, you know, going to the movies, something that zones you out, something that gets you to forget about all that clutter in your mind. There's a reason why these things are balancing and centering and desirable because they are uncluttering your mind and your environment. The number one thing that blocks your intuition, and I wanna say it very specifically, that blocks your already strong intuition is clutter, it's clutter. Think about it, have you ever been in your home and you thought, you know what? I am going to completely go through this one room, let's say it's the kitchen, I'm going to completely go through it. I'm going to declutter it. I'm going to clean it. I'm going to organize it. And you do. And when you're done, what does it feel like standing in that room? It just feels peaceful and just, oh, just clean and calm and peaceful. And then you go in the living room and it's chaos. And you're like, oh, I just want to go back into the kitchen. Same is true for the mind. Same is true for intuition. It wants a decluttered space to flow through. So let's talk about what is blocking your intuition. What's blocking your intuition could be uh, having a lot of material items, a lot of things. Do, we, do you own, you know, a, a loom that you were going to learn how to use and it's in the basement? Do you know what I mean? Do you own things that you will never look at again? You're never going to touch them again. You're never going to use them. It was a good idea at one point and you just sort of shoved it away in the corner of your basement. Everything that you own is something that you need to take care of. Now, do I push for a minimalist lifestyle? Absolutely not. 
Absolutely not. But what I do push for is if you're going to clutter your environment with physical materials and objects, clutter it with that which you love to use, view, experience, have in your atmosphere. If you have 200 items up in your attic that you're never going to use, they were whimsical things at one point, they're broken items, things like this, and they're just sporadic and they just shoved them up there for no reason. Please know that your mind knows they're up there. <laughs> your energetic system is attached to them. You own those objects. And so that pull is still there. But if you, let's say you're an artist or a book lover, if you're an artist and you have 200 different brushes, that's not clutter that's going to pull on you and be stressed. That's clutter that aligns with you. If you're a book lover and you have 200 books just on this one wall, that's not clutter that's going to pull at you. That's clutter that aligns with you. So in the physical world and your environment where you live, where you work, let's start there and think about the things that pull on you that shouldn't be pulling on you. Whatever you're passionate about, yes, have a whole bunch of that. It's not about quantity. It's about quality of the things that you own and that you have and that you hope that you house. There's a reason why, you know, when we start getting toward hoarding, we're starting to, to really, I mean, that's just think of it in those terms, that's covering up. Now, most of us, you know, we aren't hoarders, but we are going to just throw that in the attic or throw it in the garage or throw it out in the shed or throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it. Throw it. It's one of those things, if you're never going to use it again, if it doesn't bring joy into your life, right? Don't hold on to it. Rehome it. Find a different place for it. Lighten the load. Lighten, lighten the, the mental clutter and let it go. I explain it this way. If you have a painting that's hanging in your hallway, a hallway that you walk down all the time, and let's say the back of that painting is broken and you know you need to fix it and it's kind of it's it's up here somewhere but you you think you sort of forgot about it you know you have to fix it you walk past that painting every day but you think you forgot about it like it's it's out I'll, I'll get around to that at some point I'll remember some other day the truth is every time you walk past that painting your energetic system knows that you are attached to the repair of that painting and so every time you walk down that hallway your energy gets pulled a little bit toward it. Whether you consciously remember every time you see it or not, you're still pulled toward. It's a to-do item and it's a to-own item. So everything you own, everything that you need to do in the material world, in your home, in your work environment, everything you need to organize or repair, all of these things are part of your mental clutter. And what do we do about that? Well, we get started. I'll give you, I'll give you some steps toward the end here. First, what I want to talk about is uh, the other types of clutter. But I do want to say this about environmental clutter. Again, if it's meaningful to you, it should be in your day-to-day -day life. If it is aligned with what brings you joy and passion and bliss, it's not clutter. The artist should have so many art supplies. That's abundance of joy. The book lover should have so many books. That's abundance of joy. So if it brings you happiness and bliss and it feeds your soul, have a whole bunch of it that does not fall in the category of clutter. Clutter is items that you don't need, you don't want, that are weighing you down energetically. Now, let's talk about uh, emotional clutter. Emotional clutter also gets in the way of intuition in it's that that sort of mental, you know, trauma treadmill stewing kind of thing that goes on in your mind. I I can relate to it. We all can relate to it. We've all had those moments where we just, you know, it just keeps rolling through our head. Well, what if this happens? Or we look in the past, oh, that happened and that happened and that happened. Or we look in the future, well, what if, what if, what if, what if? This type of um, thought pattern 
blocks intuition. This thought pattern comes from a variety of things. And this is why I encourage people, find a community, find people that you can talk to, whether it's a therapist, therapy is awesome. Therapy is fantastic. If you've never done therapy, do it. It's wonderful. It is a beautiful thing. I think everyone should do it. But whether it's therapy or a community or a good friend, start talking, start communicating. When we carry these burdens and our, our mind goes through these, these repetitive loops, it blocks your intuition. If there's something that you need to say or uh, you know communication that you really want to have with someone, work toward having that. Might not happen today, I get it, but work toward it. Don't sit still. When it comes to emotional clutter, don't sit still take steps. And we're going to talk about how to take those steps in, in a minute. But move forward toward that empty mind. Just take a minute to sit and say, okay, what have I thought about in the last hour? You know, what are the things that have run through my head in the last hour? That's going to give you a huge clue to the emotional baggage that is rummaging around there. And I don't want you to have that. You don't want you to have that. Can we fix it instantly? Sometimes no, but we can start working on it. So everything that is left unsaid, everything that is, uh, you know, an old pain that you really want to release and you're ready to move forward, you deserve that. You deserve that. So whatever support structure you can get to work with some of that emotional clutter I really, really encourage you to do so. And it can be tools as well. It can be shadow work, perhaps that you do. It can be going inward and just asking yourself, you know, what do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? And really just let, allowing yourself to go deep into a situation. Whatever works best for you, we're all different, which is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? I love that. I love that. And then there's lastly, there's the to-do list. Where is your to-do list? Is it up here? Because if it's up here, you got to like put this video on pause right now <laughs> and either get yourself a good old pad of paper and a pen or a good old app. Doesn't matter if you're the, the physical writing it down on paper person. Awesome. Create a to-do list. If you're an app person, jump into a to-do app ASAP. When you can get all of your to-dos out of your mind, onto paper, out of your mind, into that app, What, however it works best for you, when you can do that, you're going to release so much clutter in your mind. When it comes to intuition, intuition is all about being really in the moment. You need to be very in the moment in order to access that intuitive channel. And think about this. Everything I've talked about so far, everything that we think about in the past, everything that we think about in the future, that emotional clutter, all the stuff that's physically around us that's kind of pulling at our attention, that physical clutter, right? The to-do list, oh, I have to do this because future this, or I have to do this so I don't you know, repeat the past this. These are all things that are pulling us out of the moment into the I need to's, I should, this is off balance. It's all pulling you out of the moment. Intuition really needs you to be in the moment. And the easiest way to get there is to get rid of clutter. So here's your task, right? Here's your task for the day. When it comes to clutter, number one, do not put pressure on yourself. Do you know what pressure is? It's more clutter more clutter so you're listening to this video and you're like oh oh you have no idea what's in my like how many things are in my basement or my attic and there's just so much oh I don't I wouldn't even know where to start deep breath take a deep breath with me here we go <laughs> decluttering to open your intuition is not about the end game it's not about the final moment where everything is uncluttered it's not at all this is an energetic path, meaning if you are in the act of decluttering, your intuitive channel will open. Literally, it's not when everything's decluttered, you're going to access your intuition. 
it's literally in the process of decluttering, your intuition will start to speak. Try it. Try it. Pick a closet. Pick a that you need to organize. Go for that kitchen junk drawer, right? There's a challenge for you. <laughs> Go for that one. Pick something physical and declutter it. Get that to-do list down on paper or into that app. Do that one first. That's a huge one. And then even write down a personal emotional to-do list. Here are the things that I want to work through emotionally and take a baby step toward that. It can even just be a phone call to connect with a therapist or reach out for, you know, the community. We've got an amazing community with the Sage Circle. It's people that are just like you going through the exact same thing, decluttering and opening and decluttering and opening. And it is fantastic to be with others that are doing the same thing. I'll put a link in here for you for that one. But when it comes to decluttering, it's about the act of decluttering, not the quantity of it. So just get started and you will start to see your intuition start to bubble up and you'll start to get more and more messages. And that's really all it is. That's your steps to doing this is organize. I know it can be hard to organize, but if you really sit down and say for these seven minutes, I'm going to organize for these seven, only seven minutes a day, right? Seven minutes and seven seconds. It doesn't matter. Set a timer if you need to carve that time out for yourself. You deserve it. And watch as you start to let go of the physical objects that don't bring you bliss, as you start to let go of the old uh, triggers and moments of pain and work through them and heal through them, as you start to dump that to-do list out of your mind and onto paper or into an app, you will see you're going to feel lighter. You're going to sleep better. You're going to have less of that, you know, trauma, treadmill, panic, problem stuff going on in the mind. I say less because this is all about growth. It's not about perfection. It's not about the end game. It's about the process. And you're going to start to open up more room for calm moments, moments where you can fill back up, moments where you can really love the moment that you're in and you deserve that and it's in that moment where your intuitive channel opens up and says hmm now that you've made some room for me I'd like to come through and give you some guidance I'd like to speak more loudly I'd like to deliver these messages to you so get started find something small like I said junk drawer closet you could go for the garage if you wanted. You really could. <laughs> but don't do all of it. Pick one thing. Get the to-do list out on paper or an app. Line up what you want to work on emotionally and declutter a small area of your home, just a closet or a, a small room. Get started. And then watch randomly through the days. You'll start to get more signs. You'll start to you'll get more messages. They'll be popping in there and you'll be really excited. And know this, the decluttering, it's an ongoing process because we're always going to have that moment where you're like, you know what? Basket weaving, that's it. And we're going to run to the store. We're going to get all the supplies and then we're going to set it to the side because our kid needs something or we've got you know, another task that we have to do. And then three days later, we're going to be like, nah, I'm just going to pop this into the basement. So it's ongoing. It's ongoing. Let it be a natural part of your life to let go and release, let go and release, let go and release. And your intuition is going to open more and more and more. In the comment section below, tell me what you're going to do. Like, what, actually, we'll just start with this because the emotional stuff, I, I get it. That's very personal. And the to-do list in the head, I get it. That's really personal too. But perhaps tell me what environment environmental area are you going to declutter like are you going to tackle that basement or the room or an attic share with share with us what you're going to do we want to encourage you because we want to be there for you we're in this together
This is your moment.